quickly we're going to see the motor pathway for the limbs and trunk. So this this would be the corticospinal tract. We will begin on the precentral gyri in the frontal cortex. We have the primary primary motor cortex, supplementary motor cortex. Primary motor cortex is Brodmann area 4 and supplementary motor cortex is 6. And we also have other um, important area, Brodmann areas in the frontal lobe, but here we will just care about this one. So let's remember the concept of upper and lower motor neuron. We have a neuron, usually it's upper motor neuron because it's on the cortex and will descend to the spinal cord, synapse on the lower motor neuron and this lower motor neuron innervates the muscles. So we will see, in this video we will only see the corticospinal tract, that is for movement, growth movement of the limbs. And we will see that even though it is not as easy as is usually explained, we will get to it and we will see that at the end the, the pathway is a crossed pathway. So we will begin with the upper motor neuron in the cortex. This neuron, the axons, passes through the internal capsule and corona radiata, posterior, posterior limb of the internal capsule. It's going to descend through the cruz cerebri, the cerebral peduncles, on the midbrain, then to the pons. In the pons, this is called the pyramidal tract. And here is also of the other side. This pyramidal tract converge on the medulla and they cross. So this is called the pyramid decussation. Now, don't cross all the... Not all the fibers crosses. Here, the, the most of them crosses and the other stay like this. So now we have two tracts that are descending on the medulla. This tract that do, do, does not cross is called the ventral spinothalamic, sorry, ventral corticospinal tract. And this that, that crosses, that, is, that was from this side, is called the lateral corticospinal tract. This is because if we do a cross section of the medul of the spinal cord here, of the spinal cord, we will see, let me put the posterior horn, anterior horn, anterior horn, posterior horn. So this ventral corticospinal tract is descending here in the anterior funiculus and this lateral corticospinal tract is descending here. So we have two descending pathways that are part of the corticospinal tract, but one is ventral and the other is lateral. The lateral has already crossed and this is the pathway that we usually see or that is taught usually, but we are usually not taught about the, the fascicles or the tracts that are not crossed. Well, anyway, this lateral corticospinal tract that crosses then uh, continues to descending all the way down until it synapses on the lower motor neuron and this lower motor neuron exits the spinal cord and innervates some muscle. So this usually goes for the upper trunk and upper limbs, neck, etc. Now, the ventral corticospinal tract descends, descends all the way down until um, the level at which the lower motor neuron is going to exit. Here, and here is the, this medulla. Now, is it's not going to do synapse on this lower motor neuron. It's going to cross to the other side through the anterior commissure on the spinal cord 
and then the synapse is with, is with this lower motor neuron on this lateral side. So, what is coming from this, let's say that this is the left cortex. Here the QC is the lateral corticospinal tract and the lateral corticospinal tract. And, uh, those synapses on the lower motor neuron and innervates some right muscle of the upper limb. And this that does not cross at the medulla, then descends, and at the level in which the lower motor neuron is going to exit, this upper motor neuron axon crosses to the other side and synapses on that contralateral lower motor neuron, and this lower motor neuron uh, goes out of the spinal cord and innervates some lower limb muscle. So the tract, both corticospinal tracts, crosses at different moments, but both crosses. Um, now damage to the upper motor neuron before the crossing will produce a spastic paralysis of the contralateral side. So here I'm damaging this and there will be paralysis of the contralateral side. Spastic paralysis. This is a spastic paralysis because this upper motor neuron terminates at lower motor neurons in the spinal cord, but also on some interneurons. So before arriving, for example, to this lower motor neuron, arises to a interneuron, and this interneuron synapses with the lower motor neuron. So this is because each time that we are innervating a a muscle that is mm, innervated by this lower motor neuron. Yes, this lower motor neuron was excited or excited. But by this upper motor neuron, this upper motor neuron has a excitatory uh, neurotransmitter, but there are many other neurons that are coming to the inhibitory or interneurons. This interneuron releases an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and so they inhibit the lower motor neurons that are, uh, let's say, uh, doing the opposite movement of this lower motor neuron in the muscle. So, if we damage this corticospinal tract, yes, would be maybe one muscle that is not innervated, but most of them would be interneurons that are not innervated, and so there is no inhibitory neurotransmitter releasing into the lower motor neuron, and so the lower motor neuron is always active, and so there is spastic paralysis contraction uh, muscle. This was before the crossing. If it is after the crossing, for example, here, there would be spastic paralysis of the contralateral side. Uh, so sorry, of the ipsilateral side of the lesion. And damage of the lower motor neuron always produces a ipsilateral um, flaccid paralysis because now the muscle is not innervated.